give him a praise. Two minutes, we're going to just lift up our voice and just appreciate the Lord. Just tell him that you love him. Just tell him that you love him. You know he loved us first even before we began to love him. Just go ahead. Lord, I love you, oh God. Not because I'm here, because I'm asking for anything. But Lord, I'm just here, oh God, because I love you. I appreciate you, oh God. Lord, I celebrate you for all the great things, oh God, that you are doing in my life. Somebody go ahead. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. My sotori and the kataya. Let break the door shut up, my Oh, my siyande today. Lord, we worship you, God. Father, we magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Let me hold that your neighbor beside you. Let me hold that hand to the left and to the right. Let me hold that your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, God bless you. Let me tell the neighbor, it's nice to see you in church. But the way you are saying it, are you afraid of him? Tell your neighbor, it's nice to see you in church. Let me tell your neighbor, God has been good to me. How about you? No, you didn't say it. Say, God has been good to me. How about you? Wow. Let me tell that your neighbor, because it's your time. I didn't hear you tell your neighbor, because it's your time. And because it's your turn. No devil from the pit of hell can stop you on your road to destiny. No, talk to the other one. Say, because it's your time. And because it's your turn. No devil from the pit of hell can stop you on your road to destiny. I want to squeeze those hands and begin to pray for him or her. Say, this month of September, you will be fruitful. You will multiply. Go ahead. Let me hear you pray. Don't be selfish. Pray for your neighbor. Just squeeze those hands. Squeeze those hands. I pray for you. In your business, I see fruitfulness all around you. In your career, I see fruitfulness around you. Ah, in the works of your hands, I see multiplication around you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go 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 ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lord, the Rebo said that today, Pasha Tayanaha, I see fruitfulness, I see multiplication everywhere. I see fruitfulness, I see multiplication everywhere in your life, in your career, in your marriage, in your home. Oh, receive it now. I say, receive it right now. Go ahead, prophesy and pray for that your neighbor. You will not remain the same. I see you growing beyond this level. I see you breaking new barriers. I see you breaking new frontiers. I see God lifting you from where you are to where God will not want you to be. Go ahead, squeeze those hands. Squeeze those hands. I pray for your neighbor. Thank you, Father. Oh, I give you the praise of God. Oh, thank you, Lord. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we are praying. Are you shouting that amen? Okay. Let's pick up our Bibles. I read two scriptures. and that's, I didn't say sit down. I just said let's read our Bibles. I didn't say. If you are sitting down, there's something wrong. Go on, please. Just, let's be on our feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Exodus chapter 1. And I want to read verse 7. Then we're going to read Acts chapter 14. And we're going to stop at 17. Amen. Let me tell your neighbor, what do you do at home? You are always late to church. Are you afraid of him or her? No, let me ask him or her, what do you do at home? Why are you late? Come for praise and worship. Are you, or don't you praise, you don't want to praise and worship God? Let me ask your neighbor. Come for praise and worship. Huh? Tell your neighbor, we start praying here from 9.30 in the morning. I hope you are awake then. Let me ask your neighbor, please. It's not, I'm not joking. I'm serious. I'm serious. It's a serious matter. Ah. Praise and worship is like, oh Lord my God. Then you now allow them to now keep you outside from your father's house. No, I shouldn't be. In my father's house, there are many mansions there. In my father's house, above. Somebody say happy, happy. Happy, happy, happy we shall be. Happy, happy, happy. I thought you were single. 
happy, happy, happy we shall be in my father's house. If you became a Christian two years ago, you won't understand the song. All what you understand is God in heaven. No, don't worry. There are still some songs that when you sing, they have many. Mm. I'm trying to remember one again. One just said something. He said, Do you know there is another fellowship in I know there is another Okay, point to your neighbor. Do you know there is another? I know there is another. Hey, do you know there is another? Hallelujah. Okay, we are not Christians of today. Amen. Okay, I, I now understand. Don't worry. And some of you, if you can sing that song, then you have you have come from the back, 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 back. Ah, ah. You did not listen to Ren Kenoli. You did not listen to Don Moen when you are growing. That's why you will remember that one. Then you will remember one like this. This one is not like those kind of song. Anything will my enemy do for me? Exodus chapter 1 and <laughs> verse 7. <laughs> Exodus chapter 1. I'm going to read this. Exodus 1, 17. 17, 17, 17. Exodus 1 and verse... Oh, verse 7, sorry. It's verse 7, I said. Sorry. The Bible says, And the children of Israel, they were what? Please let me put where you see Israel. Put the Rema house there. And if we talk about the children in the Rema house, that means me. I am one of them. I don't know about you. I am one of them. Okay, now. One, two, three, go. The children of the Rema house are fruitful and increased abundantly and multiply and works exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. And the state of California was filled with them. The state of the country of the United States was filled with them. Can I have an amen? Amen. Now, Acts, uh, Acts chapter 14 and verse 17. Acts 14 and verse 17. I'll just tell you four different things then I'll get out of your way. Don't worry. Uh, you know, I told you that every Sunday I come here, I want to kiss you. What that simply means is I want to keep it simple and short. That's all. Amen. Verse 17. Somebody was looking and said, Pastor wants to kiss me. Guy, go away. Nice. Yeah. Sit down somewhere. Amen. <laughs> the, Bible, <laughs> the Bible says he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful what? Fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness. If you like giving titles, you can give it fruitful seasons. Let's pray. Father, we just bless your holy name. We thank you, O oh God, for your faithfulness and your goodness. Lord, we thank you this morning, O oh God, because we know as we have come to celebrate, O oh God, before you this morning. These fruitful seasons that we are talking about, Lord, they are already started in our lives in the name of Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, for this month, O oh God, of supernatural fruitfulness and multiplication. I know, O oh God, that great things, O oh God, will come. And by the end of September, we all will gather like this and will come and rejoice for the great things that God would have done in our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and we give you glory, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Somebody shout that amen like a thunder. Amen. Let's, let's give the Rema Levites a clap offering. Amen. God bless you. Celebrate them. Celebrate them, please. Hallelujah. Amen. So while we're waiting and the month of August was coming to an end, God began to share with me that from the month of springing forth, thank you so much. Appreciate everybody. Let's give them a clap offering. Amen. Wow. See, my, I, I told my, I have to tell one of my daughters to learn how to play the bass guitar, you know. That's the best bass guitar in the whole of the whole wide world. Celebrate her, please. Amen. Wow. Amen. So, 
I tried, I've been telling Brad Chooks to teach me one instrument. <laughs> don't say pastor, I don't like you people. They told me it's late. I said, there's nothing that is late. All you just need to do is put your heart to it. Sorry? I didn't hear you. I should do tambourine. Look at all of you. Huh? I can do drum set. Is your bar? Thank you. You see, my wife is encouraging me. You see, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Amen. See, somebody even encouraged me last Sunday. The person told me that I, could, I should hurry up and do that CD that I do just need to sing. When the choir is singing, I will say, Yes, it's good. God will do it. Then they will say, Ooh. I say, Yes, go on. Yes, go on. Nah, that's a, don't worry, it's okay. So we start from there that Exodus 1 7. The Bible says, And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied, and the works exceedingly mightily, and the land was filled with them. This is serious fruitfulness in this land and serious multiplication. Then we looked at it in Acts 14. He said, God did not leave himself without a witness, but in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven. Rain from heaven simply connotes blessings, ladies and gentlemen. Every time you see rain in the Bible, you will see that that is God talking about about blessings, where he says, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And he says, I'm fruitful season, not only rain now, fruitful season, filling our hearts with food and with gladness. I pray all through this month that God will give you joy. Amen. I pray that God will give your heart gladness in the name of Jesus. Sorrow and mourning. The Bible says that they shall flee away from you in the name of Jesus. Can I have that amen like a thunder? Amen. Now, in creation, God made man in his own image after his own likeness. And listen, male and female, God created you them. Then all of a sudden, that's like from verse 24 to 27. But in verse 28 now, when he created man in his image, after his likeness, the next thing the Bible says that, the Bible now says, and God blessed man. But there is always a way that God wants to bless man. Blessings, ladies and gentlemen, most of the time, I've told you here, don't equate God's blessing to a car. Don't equate it to a house. Don't equate it to the clothes you wear or the shoes you wear. That, oh, God, that's God's blessings. No. All those things that you see are just the effects of the blessing. The blessing itself is an empowerment, is an endowment. The blessing itself is grace that attracts all those things. Can I have an amen here? So God said and in verse Genesis 1.28, the Bible says, and God blessed man. How did he bless man? The next thing he said is, and God blessed man, and God, and God said, let man be fruitful. Help me look at your neighbor. Call your name. My name is Bright Merit here. I like calling my name everywhere I go. Or you don't get excited about your name. Tell your neighbor, my name is Bright. My name is... Now, I didn't hear you say, my name is Bright. My name is... So, my name is in the Bible. What God said is, Bright, be fruitful. Help me look at your neighbor and shout to that your neighbor, Bright, be fruitful. I can't hear you. You people, why are you doing that? So let me say, bright, be fruitful. Now, what he said, the blessing that he wants to bless us with is, be fruitful. He didn't stop there and he said, and multiply. Ladies and gentlemen, to be fruitful simply means that you are productive in whatever you are doing. I pray for you here today that by the power and authority in the name of Jesus, Everything you lay your hands upon, anything that you do in life, you will be fruitful. I say you will be productive in the name of Jesus. Some people, they go through life and they don't produce anything. They are not productive at all. You're talking to them, do this and do that. You're talking to them on the job. And that's why you see that the first people that you lay off from your business are those people that are unproductive. When you see a man who is productive, when you see a man who is bringing results, you want to keep that kind of person. They don't try to throw that kind of person away or leave him out of what God wants to do. Praise the Lord. So to be fruitful again is to produce better results. 
somebody here, what you are producing right now, it's not okay. But you are going to produce better results from today in the name of Jesus. Listen to me, these are fruitful seasons. And I don't know, maybe you understand what's going on here. But God has said that we will produce better results. So I prophesy over you right now, by the power and authority in the name of Jesus, in your life, I will begin to see better results uh, from your marriage, better results from your home, better results in your career, better results in your business, uh, in the name of Jesus. Somebody who believes it, shout a big amen. Now, if we're talking about somebody producing better results, you will see in Proverbs 11.30, the Bible says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And so when we continue from there, there are people in this world that God declared over them that they should be fruitful. If you look at the name Noah in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1, I was speaking somewhere and I wanted to say Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1. And I said, Noah chapter 9 and verse 1. It was really serious that day. I said, wow, that's serious. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1, the Bible says, and God bless Noah. That's why I always tell you, call your name. Your name is written in the Bible. Help me look at that, your neighbor. I say, have you seen your name in the Bible before? Is there any, is, are, are they replying you? Is it? I saw you. Got, God bless Noah. That Noah is my name. God bless Bright. God bless Bright. Not only Bright now. And his sons and his daughter and his wife and every member of the Rema house. Can I have an amen here? Yeah. I didn't hear you say that amen. Yeah. Now, look at what God said to him when he blessed him. Because what God says to you matters a lot as well. And the Bible says, and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Then replenish the earth. I see people here. There is no barrenness in this house. We only have awaiting mothers in this house. Please say amen. I said there is no barren woman in this house. There is no barren womb in this house. I stand today by the power and authority in the name of Jesus. Any form of barrenness will put you out of this house. In the name of Jesus. Out of this house. In the name of Jesus. We decree fruitfulness right now. God said the supernatural fruitfulness and multiplication. When he told Noah here. He said he told Noah and his sons and said to them be fruitful and multiply. Then replenish the earth. I speak over your life. By the power and authority in the name of Jesus. Everything called barrenness is gone out of your life in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. If you look at Noah again, no, Noah, Genesis chapter 9 and verse 7. The Bible says, and you be fruitful. He said, and you be ye fruitful. Let me say it to you as the Bible said it. And you be fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth. And multiply therein. Not only Noah now. When God was going to deal with Abraham. God began to tell him about fruitfulness. God began to tell him about multiplication. Ladies and gentlemen. When sometimes we come to services like this. What we say is let me just go hear what they have to say. Please stop that attitude. What did I say? Stop it. Why you are here is not because you want to fill time on Sunday morning. Am I making sense here? Not because I don't have things to do on Sunday morning and I want to come fill time. No. It's bigger than that. This is your life. You know, I used to watch something when I was growing up and they would come, this is your life. Then they would now begin to bring all the people the man has met in life. How they helped him to get to where he got to. They won't tell him maybe his mom is in uh, five uh, cities away. They will bring the mom too and they will say, oh, bright, this is your life. That's your mom. It's about you and this is your life. When you get here, there are words that God will be speaking. It's not just ordinary. When those words are coming, the people who take those words, the people who believe those words, the people who have faith in those words, those are the ones that the word will begin to work for. Let me say it again. Because this word works. Either you know it or not. It works. And it depends on how you receive the word. The word of God, the Bible says, is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Wheresoever the word of the king is, the Bible says there is power. And the words that have gone out of my mouth, Isaiah 55, 11, they will not return to me for it. They, they will accomplish that which they have been sent for to do. And those words shall prosper therein. 
Words are supposed to prosper in your life. Every negative word that have been prospering in your life, I cancel them today in the name of Jesus. I speak the words of life over your life right now. The words of progress, the words of fruitfulness, the word of multiplication. Let them begin to take place. Uh, let them begin to happen in your life uh, from now on in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout that amen like a thunder. Abraham, listen to me. God first had to change his name. From Abraham, change it to Abraham. That was when fruitfulness now began to come. If we go to Genesis chapter 17, Genesis chapter 17, and let's just look at Abraham there, Genesis chapter 17, and I want to read from verse 1, because when God cuts a covenant with his people, let, the whole, let everything want to crumble, God will always elevate his people. If he has said it, he will do it. That's why you see in Numbers 23, 19, he said, the words, and he said, the words that have gone out of my mouth, they will not return to me void, but they will accomplish that which I have been sent for to do. Words are supposed to prosper in your life. That's why words that you hear matter a lot in this life. If all you do is you hear negative words on a constant basis, and somebody said, if you hear a constant word for 28 days, you will begin to act that word. Praise the Lord. And so you see here is a covenant. The Bible says, verse 1, And when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, Now he's introducing himself, I am the almighty God. He now told, me, told him, Walk before me and be thou perfect. Look up everybody. A 99 year old man. What, what are you talking about? Walk before me and be thou perfect. But God was telling him, this is the criteria. Then in verse 2, he now said, after I will make my covenant between me and you. Now, what is the covenant he wanted to make? He said, will multiply thee exceedingly. Ladies and gentlemen, Abraham's blessing. Are they yours or not? That's exactly, you are part of this covenant, please. Sing it again. Abraham. Don't, don't let your neighbor know. Don't let your neighbor know. Are you listening to me? It's yours. So this is what the covenant that God caught with Abraham. And so if Abraham's blessings are mine, then it's mine as well. He said, I will make my covenant between me and thee. And will make thee exceedingly what? I will multiply thee exceedingly. When he talks about multiplying you exceedingly, he's talking about surplus. Somebody tell your neighbor, from today I live in surplus. You know, they say people, some people live in lack. But tell your neighbor, from today I live in surplus in the name of Jesus. Then it goes on from there. The Bible says, and Abe Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Verse 5. Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abraham. He needed to change his name. Somebody's name is being changed today. The name that they have been calling you. Ah, your name, oh God, is my sickness, is my this, is my data, and everything is negative. From today, it will not be your name anymore. In the name of Jesus. Look at that woman. When they wanted to introduce her, they said the woman with the issue of blood. Ah, listen to me. Whatever issue that it is ah, in your life, ah, that men are are using it to describe you and it's negative from today they describe you like that no more in the name of jesus the same god who changed abraham to abraham that same god is changing your name from barrenness to fruitfulness in the name of jesus he's changing your name from lack to abundance in the name of jesus if you believe in somebody shout amen, amen. he said neither shall thy name anymore be called abraham but thy name shall be called Abraham, for a father of many nations I have made thee. Then verse 6 he said, I will make, I will make thee exceeding fruitful. Hmm. I thought somebody caught it. They're not talking about Abraham here. They are talking about me. They're not talking about anybody else. It's me. It's the Rema house. I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee and kings he said shall come out of your loins of your loins your children are not just ordinary people today Obama is there tomorrow John Meritia will be the head oh you didn't hear me you didn't hear me if you have children call their name the white house is supposed to be our house we're supposed to rule the world all over the world 
The Spirit is moving all over the world like the prophet said it will be all over the world. There's a mighty, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the world has come. Even in the White House. It's not secluded. But you know one thing I want us to know is that this. You and I, when God talks about exceeding fruitfulness, God talked about supernatural fruitfulness and supernatural multiplication, there will be people who will not believe and who will live in lack. There will be people who will believe that the world economy that is what I live by. And because the economy is bad, my own economy too should be bad. Somebody said that is not true. When there was famine in the land, they created a place called Goshen. Is somebody listen to me? When you get to Goshen, they had everything that hearts could wish. People who lived in Goshen never lacked. I came to decree in this house today that by the power and authority in the name of Jesus, every one of us from this very moment onwards will begin to live in Goshen in the name of Jesus. Around us, there might be things that are happening, but they will not come near you and I in the name of Jesus. The Bible says a thousand might be falling by your right, ten thousand by your left, but he said with your eyes, you do see that it will not come near you in the name of Jesus. We don't deal with the world economy. Our economy is from heaven, ladies and gentlemen. And when you live under heaven's economy, lack those kind of things, recession shall not be your part and your lot. Let me tell that your neighbor, tap him or her, and look at look at me very well. Look at me very well. Tell that your neighbor I live in Goshen. I don't live on the earth. Hallelujah. Said I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of your loins. But let me say this this morning. Praise the Lord. Let me say this this morning. Now we're talking about fruitfulness. And we're talking about multiplication. Not just ordinary but supernatural. Now I wrote here that how can I attain to this? How can I really be fruitful and how can I multiply? You see, overnight I was trying to write it down and God began to tell me this. He said, number one thing that we do is this. In this life, you need to be diligent. You know, there's something I sent out this week and I just remembered it again. That 97% of people who quit before their time, they are employed by the 3% who did not quit. I'll say it again. 97% of people who quit before their breakthrough, they are employed by the rest 3% that did not quit. And so you see that those people stayed. Even in the midst of adversity, they stayed. That's what is called diligence. The business might not be working right now, but hey, do you know that God is watching? What are you doing? Are you going to throw in the tower? Are you going to say that's the end of it? No. You have put so much into it to turn back and go away. It's not possible anymore. If you're going to be fruitful, ladies and gentlemen, we need to come to that point where we're diligent. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 29. The Bible says, See a man diligent in his business. He will not dine with rascals. He will not dine with ordinary people, but he will dine with kings. If you ever want to de dine with kings in this life, be diligent about what you do. There will be times, ladies and gentlemen, that you will need to pay the price. There will be times that you will burn the midnight oil. There will be times that you will read books that don't even make sense to you. But one day, that book, you will quote from it and people will look at you and say, wow, this guy is very intelligent. We need him on our team. People pay, ladies and gentlemen, for things that you have done in the secret and you are diligent about, that's what they pay for in the natural. I pray for you today. You will definitely be fruitful. But listen to me. This is what it is. If you are ever going to be fruitful, every fruitful 
thing that you see in this life starts from a seed. Are you listening to me? It starts what? what? It starts from a seed. And so number one thing that I wrote here how to be fruitful is get a seed. Get a seed. Somebody might be looking at me and say, ah, Pastor, I want to talk about money. Hey, leave that one. It's too cheap. Money is too cheap. Get a seed of service and do something. I'm unemployed today. There was a time I came to America. I didn't have a job. And so when I came into church, I looked at the church then and I'm looking. I said, oh, okay. Okay, okay. And I'm praying. So I used to preach this and teach it. And I used to teach people, I think what standard trust bank or something like that in Nigeria then. I used to come in like twice a week and they used to, before they opened the bank, they used to do like a morning devotion. And these were the things that we have to teach them 30 minutes, then we pray for 30 minutes in the morning devotion before they start the bank then. But you know what? We began to teach this. If you are not unemployed today, go volunteer somewhere. There's nothing called unemployment. No. Go volunteer somewhere. And as you are volunteering and as you are diligent about it, you are really hard working in it, somebody will pick you up. When I came to America, that was what I did. I saw the church. And when I looked at it, I just walked up to the pastor. Because I was not a lazy man. And I said, I still don't understand what is going on here. But you know what, sir? I will resume here tomorrow. I will resume in church tomorrow. I didn't say, sir, you will give me so much. Because today, I see people in America, when, they, when you talk to them, ah, I want you to come to the, this church. Ah, how much are you going to pay? In church. So if we pay everybody, are you listening to me? Where will the money come from? We want to pay everybody. So where will the money come from? It will come from anywhere. It will work that way. So volunteer somewhere. As you are volunteering, God is looking at you, checking you out. God is looking at the heart that you are putting in that volunteering work. And God is saying, you know what? There is a big multinational company somewhere. You put down your resume one day and you just see that they pick you up. Let me say this. Uh, Brother A.Y. that was playing the keyboard here. How many of you know him? Good. Uh, Brashino's junior brother. He came. And all of a sudden, you know, okay. I said, oh, we have a radio station. Can you just run the radio station? I will look at him every day. He will come there. 12 o'clock in the afternoon, he will lock himself in that place. He will be checking the internet. He will just be talking, 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 talking to people on the radio. Do you know that he left here? He's getting married in like two, three weeks. When he got back to Nigeria, somebody looked at him. We didn't pay him in that radio station. All the talk that he's talking. Somebody looked at him one day. Ah, they told me you are getting married. Eh, why did you tell me? This is a million naira for you. Then all of a sudden, listen, the same thing he was doing here that he was locking himself up, that's the same thing that the radio station took him up in Nigeria and he's employed right now. Now, if he asks, listen, listen, listen to me. If he asks for money, this is us. We have not changed. This is us. But if everything was about the money, then there would not be open heavens over him. Am I making sense here today? Now, most of us, we don't understand the principles of this world and this kingdom. When you apply the principles, you won't fail. When I told the pastor I'm coming, and all of a sudden I stood, and I was making myself available, God was opening doors for me. To come to a point that the job that I was doing, I found out that even I didn't need to touch my paycheck, it was money that was coming from other sources that made me what I was. Listen to me, let me move forward here. Get a seed. Every seed I put here as a potential for a bountiful harvest. Every seed. Every seed had a potential for a bountiful harvest. Take a seed. Get a seed in your hand. Is it a seed of prayer? Go ahead. Keep doing it. Whatever it is. Is it a seed of oh, pastor, this is just all I want to do. I want to come and just clean the microphones. That's all I want to do. No problem. Pastor, I want to wake up in the morning and come and open the door to the church. Go, no problem. If that's all you can do, that's it. But you know what? God will always, God will always remember your labor of love. Let me say it again. God will always remember your labor of love. So every seed has a potential for a bountiful harvest. I wrote here that Psalm 22 verse 30. The Bible says Psalm 22 verse 30. It said, a seed shall serve the Lord and it shall be accounted unto him for a generation. A seed doesn't just stay alone. In Isaiah 55, he said, 55, 10. He said, rain cometh down and the snow too from heaven. And it does not return, but the water stay on this earth. And when the water stay and makes it bring forth and bud, 
that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. There has to be seed to the sower, bread to the eater. You know the mistake most of us do is this. We take what is bread, we eat bread. We take what is seed and we eat it as well as bread. So when it is time for us to have a seed, there is no seed there. That's why you see that financially people are struggling. You cannot, out of your paycheck of $2,000, you cannot take $200 out and say, Lord, this is the covenant that I have with you. This is my tithe. And you live on 1,800. If you can't do that, then what you are saying is that God, whatever strength you have given to me, this thing is by my strength. So whenever it's supposed to be, not by labor now, but by favor, God is looking and saying, what is the seed that you have placed on the ground? It has to be. That's how life works. That's how the kingdom works, ladies and gentlemen. The kingdom works by you sowing and it calls it reaping as well. It's a principle, sowing and reaping. But every man who sows must have a seed. Am I making sense here? Every man who sows must do what? Must have a seed. Now, when you get a seed, number two thing I put here, I'm going ahead of myself now. Number two thing I put here is get a seed. How to be fruitful? Get a seed. Be diligent about it. Then the number two thing is, when you get that seed, what you do is you sow that seed. Every farmer you see who has a seed, until the seed gets into the ground, the seed is useless. Let me say it again. Until the seed gets into the ground and you sow it, the seed becomes useless. People can step on the seed and they move away. But when you sow the seed, the great things begin to happen. Bible says, Bible says that except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and dies, it says it's ab it abided alone. But when it dies, the Bible says it brings forth much fruits. And I pray that this month, as we begin to sow good seeds and we put it on good ground, I pray that increase will come in the name of Jesus. You know, I said something here the other day. I said we can count the number of seeds in an apple. And I'm making sense. We can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you cannot count the number of apples in a seed. You can't. Put the seed, one seed, put it on the ground, and tell me the kind of number of apples that you count there. You won't see it. But that's what God does. And that's the principle. You get a seed, you sow the seed. Look at what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 6. He said, In the morning, sow thy seed. In the evening, withhold not thy hand. For thou knowest not what weather shall prosper. Either this or that, or whether they both shall be like good. Exodus 23 and verse 10, the Bible says, And six years thou shalt sow thy, thy land, and shalt gather in fruits thereof. Genesis 47 and verse 23. He said, Lo, here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. You know, Minister Today was saying this this morning in Psalm 126 verse 5. That thy seed, when you sow in tears, the Bible says you will reap in joy. It's something that we just need to know. Get a seed, sow that seed. Psalm 32 verse 20 says, Blessed are they that sow beside all waters. Blessed are they that sow beside all waters. Hosea 10.2, he says, Sow unto yourself in righteousness. Then that's when you will reap in mercy. I can go on and on and on, but we need to move on this morning. Take a seed, get a seed, sow the seed. Then the third thing is this. You water the seed. Let me say this this morning. If I get a seed, I told you here that there was a man who took the same seed and the man took, everything was just the same parameters. And they sowed the seed and was watering the seed as well. But what he was doing was that he will come. He will bless this seed. You will be fruitful. You will multiply. You will replenish the earth. Here he will tell this one, you will die. You will not rise. You will only remain at the bottom. Nothing good will come out of you. He was doing that for a very long time. And this was the experiment. At the end of the day, the one that he was causing did not produce anything. This one that he was blessing every time produce great fruits. Ladies and gentlemen, when I talk about watering your seed, what I'm talking about is the word. Am I making sense here? Is the word. Look at Luke 8.5. The Bible says, a sower went out 
to sow his seed. Luke 8, 11, he said, now the parable is this. The seed that we are talking about is the word of God. And when you look at Galatians 5, 26, he said that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. The seed is the word. And when you take the water and you begin to speak, don't take any money without speaking to it. Praise the Lord. If I come now and I want to give God this, the most, the most of the time what people do is this. Oh, get a seed. Sow a seed. Why don't you water your seed? When you now come and you drop it and you go away. Eh, why are they even asking for that money, self? Eh, I don't even know what they do with the money. Eh, da, da, da. Eh, da, 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 da. You know what you're doing? You are negating whatever it is that was prayed about concerning that seed. When you put the seed, even before you put it down, we are praying for fruitfulness and multiplication. And you say, Lord, as I sow this seed, let fruitfulness on every side, financial fruitfulness, whatever area of fruitfulness that you want, Lord God in heaven, let it happen to me. Let the multiplication that God you have talked about in this month, let it come upon my business, come upon my finances, come upon everything that concerns me in the name of Jesus. And Lord, this is your seed. I am sowing this seed and I've spoken and I've watered the seed. Ladies and gentlemen, every seed that you see that is watered, what happens? The thing grows. But every time and we come and we negate whatever seed that we are seeing, even if it's service, you serve, you are praying, praying for the church, doing everything. And after you finish praying, you go outside and all you do is lampoon and lamp blast the church. The seed is already gone. The seed is not remembered again. You know why? Because instead of you blessing, you have now put the seed in an awkward place that the seed cannot germinate what is supposed to germinate anymore. You water your seed. That means you take good words and you speak over that seed. Listen. Your children are your seed. True or false? Good. Call them. How many of you have grown up? No, don't, don't let me call. You grew up with your mom telling you, you, you this boy, you are good for nothing. There are people, the parents spoke to us like that. And my mom told me, you see, all these things you are doing for me, your children will do it for you too. So my own prayer when I became born again, when I saw the light now, is that God, even if the things I did for my mom, if my son would do a tithe of it for me, I will go crazy right now. I will go crazy right now. So I'm looking at it, that how did she cope with me? How? I was not a good boy. You can look at me now and desire me, but that time, I enter the house. My mom will look at me. She just begin to cry in her room. Begin to cry. I became a prayer point in that house. I have come to my house before and I went to my mother's room in the morning and I saw her began to cry out. God, bright, bright, bright. I said, what did I do? <laughs> From that day, my life began, I began to think about my life. That's so why I am now a prayer point for this woman. And when she's calling my name, she's just crying. No prayer point. Just crying, no prayer point. Why? So I'm making somebody to cry. It's not good now. So our kids today, that's the same thing. And so God will help us in the name of Jesus. So we take good words. That's what to water a seed means. Good words and speak over your seed. Don't just let it go like that. It makes you to be fruitful. Then we go ahead. The last thing here is when you take a seed, you sow the seed, you water the seed. Let me say it this way. No matter how your seed is, there will always be weeds that will come around. Either you like it or not. So far as you are in this life, God said in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, He said, I've opened unto you an effectual and fervent door. After He stopped there, He said, there are many adversaries. He didn't say the door will be open. He said, there are many adversaries. So there will be things that will contend with your seed. There, will, there are things that will say this seed will not be fruitful. This seed will not multiply. Those are the ones that I call weed around it. You need to whip them away. Take them away. Listen to me. The Bible says in Matthew 16, 19 that the Lord has given you and I the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That whatsoever we allow on earth shall be allowed in heaven. 
if you allow those weeds to grow around uh, your seed that you have sown and you have been watering, ah, ladies and gentlemen, everything you will not get a bountiful harvest. It will not multiply and it will not be fruitful. And that's why you need to come to that point. There is a place called a place of warfare. Matthew 18, 18 says the same thing. That whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What you are doing is you are sending prayer to every seed that you have taken, that you have sown, and that you have been watering with the word. You are sending prayer. This one is not just ordinary prayer now. Because you want to multiply and you want to be fruitful. You are sending prayer that Lord, every anti-fruitfulness demon that are around this seed, let every one of them be uprooted. I thought somebody would say amen. Listen, there are anti-fruitfulness demons around our children. Let them go in the name of Jesus. One woman, I remember years ago, when I started the prayer line, she just called and she was in tears on that phone line. Ma, what is it? <laughs> if I can't hear anything, ma, please, can you cool down and just let us hear what you have to say? <laughs> my son, my Emma, please, what has happened to your son? You would understand. Okay, I won't let me understand. You would understand. If I won't understand, then why did you call me? Are you listening? Why did you call me? So it was, I'm making it look like a joke, but it's not a joke. You know what she said? She said, My son got into the car with a couple of his friends and they said they were going to the liquor store and they entered into the liquor store and he was in the car it was his car that was driving away then all of a sudden his friends just ran out of the uh, of the liquor store entered the car okay, okay, okay. Now, start 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 let's go keep going keep going and the police went with them when the police followed them stopped them handcuffed every one of them threw them into jail you know what they did they went to rob that liquor store at gunpoint the man who sat down, her son, that's why she said, I won't understand. Her son now is an accomplice, is the getaway driver. There is no soap that you want to wash yourself with that you'll be clean. It's not possible. So that was what she was saying, that you know what? They are taking them to court, and this guy is headed towards jail. Pastor, please pray for me. Help me. I say, I only know a God that can help. I am not the one. Do you understand? So, and that's why those are the weeds around our children. That's why the Bible says evil communication corrupts good manners. We are teaching them up in the way of the Lord. But do you know that the world is waiting for them? The uh, LGBT community, they are taking them now, recruiting them from schools. And this is us. We're not supposed to talk about it. Do you understand? I was telling the pastor the other day. He said, no, 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 no. You can't talk about that. Why do you want to be controversial? I said, okay. Why do you want to be controversial? I said, okay. <laughs> but it's real. And it's happening around us. And these kids see it every day. And so we can't talk about it. May God help us. I don't know how I got there. But it has to be prayer. That's the weeding part of it. Then when you do that, a bountiful harvest comes. I would have entered into what can destroy fruitfulness. Those four things, let's put them in place. Just be diligent to do these things. See as the man diligent in his business. He will not dine with ordinary people, but he will dine with kings. He will not dine with rascals, but he will dine with kings. And be diligent to get a seed. Be diligent to sow a seed. Be diligent to water your seed. And what do you do? Be diligent again to make sure you weed around your seed. So that the devil and his cohorts will not choke that seed and you will not have a bountiful harvest. I speak over you this month by the power and authority in the name of Jesus. The same God who has spoken to us, the same God who has said in the Rema house that he himself supernaturally will make us fruitful, supernaturally will make us to multiply. That same God will work for you in the name of Jesus. Sir, whoever is there, help me put up Romans chapter 9 and verse 9. Romans chapter 9 and verse 9. This month, I'm on a serious prayer and I'm praying for as many who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. God gave me this word. And God said, for this is the word of promise. He said, at this time will I come. Not only that, he said, remove that name, put your name there. Shall have his son. I saw somebody embracing her son in this house. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. They have told you it's not possible. I saw it. 
God said, I should tell you today, it's possible. I saw it. They gave you all the evil reports in this life. I saw it. God said, it's a promise. He said, I promise. And he said, it's a promise I'm releasing in this house. Lord, Malise Keto Rianda Kataya. Rebako Siamo Shende Ketu Sianda Kata. He said, it's a promise that is releasing unto us. Remove Sarah, put your name there. That you will have your own son in the name of Jesus. And I thank God for adoption. But listen to me. He said, I should tell you that it's going to be your own son in the name of Jesus. God said, I should tell you that in this life, your own children will suck your own breast in the name of Jesus. He said, I should tell you that in this house, barrenness has disappeared. Barrenness is gone in the name of Jesus. We declare supernatural fruitfulness. Lord, in the realm of house of God, financially, we declare supernatural fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Lord God in heaven, we declare, we declare concerning that womb right now. Let the womb be open right now. Let the womb retain children in the name of Jesus. Uh, the same God uh, that opened up the womb of Sarah. That same God will open up your womb uh, in the name of Jesus. God said, and this time I will come. Uh, this is the time. The set time to favor you is now. He said, this is the time I will come. Uh, and I decree and declare in this house by the power and authority in the name of Jesus. You will have a son. Uh, you will have a son. Uh, you will have a son. Son, you will have a son. You will have a son. You will have a son in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout that amen like a thunder. What can destroy your fruitfulness? Wickedness, number one, can destroy it. Psalm 107, verse 24 says, He that turns a fruitful land into a barren one for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. Please get away from wickedness. Get away from wickedness. Wickedness is not because you took a gun and you wanted to shoot somebody. Your mouth alone is a great weapon. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Stop saying things that you don't understand. Stop bringing or maligning people and bringing them down. No, don't do it no more. That's wickedness. And that's why somebody who is fruitful before now becomes a barren land. I decree today, if you have been watching your business go down the drains, uh, it stops from today in the name of Jesus. If you have been watching your career go down, uh, it stops from today in the name of Jesus. Everything about our lives, uh, everything about the church, uh, everything about our ministries uh, begin to grow up, uh, begin to grow up, uh, begin to grow up in the name of Jesus. The Bible says you and I, we shall be the head, we shall not be the tail, we shall be above only, we shall not be beneath in the name of Jesus. God said in blessing I will bless you in multiplying uh, he said I will multiply you and so shall it be in the name of Jesus somebody shout that amen like a thunder number two thing that can destroy fruitfulness and multiplication is when you allow a low cost I put it this way low cost and I say it again no low cost will devour your bountiful harvest if you have me put up Deuteronomy 28 and verse 38 there. Deuteronomy 28, 38. We're going to read 42 as well. Deuteronomy 28, verse 38. Do fast, fast, fast. I need to get out of here. Praise God. Praise God. Now, he said, thou shalt carry much seed out of the field. Remember, we started from seed. You are carrying a lot of seed out of the field. And the Bible is into the field. And it says, shall gather but little in. This is harvest that has been destroyed. Why was the harvest destroyed? He said, for the locust shall do what? Consume it. Every locust that has been consuming our harvest ceased from this very moment. Please say amen. amen. Every locust that has been consuming your harvest, they cease from this very moment onwards. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout that amen like a thunder. Jump, jump to verse 42. Jump to verse 42. Jump to verse 42, please. They told me 28, 42. Are you there? Are those interns? Listen to what he says. He said, all thy trees and fruits of, all the trees and fruits of the land, he says, shall the locusts consume. I pray today because this is what stops people's fruitfulness. Locusts, ladies and gentlemen, might be things that you don't understand. Might be invisible forces that come to destroy when there's a seed that is supposed to be growing in you and the seed all of a sudden drops and they tell you, oh, that's miscarriage. No, 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 no. 
a demon came and he ate that child in the womb. From today, la kusianda kataya, reba kosaturi anda kate, paluka ba seteri amoshata. No locusts will devour your harvest anymore. In the name of Jesus, I decree right now, any power here that is eating up those children in the womb, they cease, they cease, they cease the activity over your life now. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout that amen like a thunder. You know, we all know Joel 2.15 when the Bible says locusts as eating. You know, it says the years, the locusts and the pamawam had eaten. Ladies and gentlemen, no locusts will eat our harvest anymore in the name of Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. These are fruitful seasons. Help me just touch your neighbor on the, uh, on the shoulder. These are fruitful seasons. These are fruitful seasons. These are fruitful seasons, my sister. These are fruitful seasons, my brother. The heavens are already open. Listen to me. Oh, the cloud is gathering right now. And the rain is about to come. The rain is about to come. The rain is about to come in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, this first Sunday of the month of September, this is the fourth day of the month of September. We decree and we declare right now by the power and authority in the name of Jesus. I pray that rain blessings will begin to come upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Rain blessings will begin to come upon you right now in the name of Jesus. God will open up the windows of heaven. God will open up your womb right now. That business of yours will not go down the drains anymore in the name of Jesus. No power of hell. No wickedness will stop your harvest in the name of Jesus. He said it's supernatural fruitfulness and supernatural multiplication. So I pray for you. Your little will become a thousand. Your thousand shall become a great nation. Your little will become a thousand. Your thousand shall become a great nation in the name of Jesus. Nothing will hold you back anymore. Nothing will hold you down anymore. You are breaking out. You are breaking forth. You are breaking out. You are breaking forth. In the name of Jesus. The covenant that God established with Abraham. That same covenant is your covenant from today. In the name of Jesus. The covenant that the Lord God with Abraham. That same covenant is yours in the name of Jesus. The covenant says, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. I pray, Lord, in this house, O oh God, we shall not be few anymore. In the name of Jesus. Stagnation will not be a pattern and lot in the name of Jesus. God will open the heavens over you in the name of Jesus. The works of your hands are, will shall be blessed, shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. If you believe in somebody, shall they believe in amen? amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I bless your name. You can have your seats.